Good morning. Can you believe it's Memorial Day? Happy Memorial Day weekend. I have very special thanks and I want to extend to Kent Farmer. Kent is uh, going to give our message this morning and it's beautiful and very inspirational and we thank Kent for his efforts uh, and, and to keep us uh, you know, in uh, our family together with, with his great uh, um, Memorial Day message. Uh, today, uh, for birthdays, it's Jonathan Beard's birthday. Happy birthday, Jonathan. And this week, anniversaries, Tuesday, Helen and Jack Vogt are celebrating 47 years of marriage. Wednesday, Jerry and Diana Kendrick are celebrating 45 years. And on Saturday, Lovey and Dovey Bishop, can you believe Gene and Bob have been married for 56 years? We extend our, our best wishes and love to each one of the happy couples and many, many more years of, uh, of, of time and happiness together. And I, I do want to uh, mention also that we are going to be having our council elections. Uh, we're going to be doing them by mail, so you'll be uh, you know, getting some further instructions this coming week. And in prayer, uh, the few folks that I want to ask you to keep in prayer, one is uh, Dorothy Shirley. Dorothy is um, uh, doing very well. She has been moved from the hospital, and she is uh, at a rehab center. And uh, her husband, Don Setting, uh, is uh, happy with her progress, and he thanks us all for uh, our prayers. And also, Catherine Burdett, I had an opportunity to speak to Catherine this week, and she's doing a little better, so you, she's very thankful that... Uh, that uh, we all remember her in prayer, so we, we remember our friend Catherine. And as always, I ask you to remember Catherine, Dottie Pinkley, and my mom, who are all in nursing facilities and they're still under quarantine. And we pray for, for them as well as all of their housemates because it's getting more difficult as the weeks go on that they don't have any uh, outside communication with the real world and some visits. So we ask you to, uh, to please remember those folks. And once again, have a very, very happy and safe Memorial Day weekend, and we will be in touch to let you know uh, as uh, how we're going to move forward with the reopening of Faith Lutheran Church. God bless. Good morning. Welcome to our Memorial Day service. I welcome you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin our service this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and have given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent, and your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare the entire forgiveness of all your sins, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. We will continue our service now with the reading of sacred scripture. As we remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms we enjoy every day, we think of how they have followed in the footsteps of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please hold our servicemen and women in your strong arms. Cover them with your sheltering grace and your presence as they stand in the gap of our protection. We also remember the families of our troops. We ask for your unique blessings to fill their homes, and we pray your peace, provision, and strength fill their lives. May the members of our armed forces be supplied with courage to face each day, and may they trust in the Lord's mighty power to accomplish each task. Let our military brothers and sisters feel our love and support. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless
begin our service this morning by our confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and have given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare the entire forgiveness of all your sins, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. We will continue our service now with the reading of sacred scripture. Anytime. First lesson today is from Acts 1, 12 through 26. Then the apostles went back to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is about half a mile away from the city. They entered the city and went up to the room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Patriot, and Judas, son of James. They gathered frequently to pray as a group, together with the woman, and with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. A few days later, there was a meeting of the believers, about 120 in all. And Peter stood up to speak. My friends, he said, the scripture had to come true in which the Holy Spirit, speaking through David, made a prediction about Judas, who was the guide of who of those who arrested Jesus. Judas was a member of our group, for he had been chosen to have a part in our work. With the money that Judas got for his evil act, he brought, bought a field where he fell to his death. He burst open and all his insights spilled out. All the people living in Jerusalem heard about it, and so in their own language, they called that field Alcodema which means fill the blood, for it is written in the book of Psalms. May his house become empty, may no one six live in it. It is also written, may someone else take his place of service. So then someone must join us, a witness, to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. He must be one of the men who were in our group during the whole time that the Lord Jesus traveled about with us. Beginning from the time John preached his message of baptism until the day Jesus was taken up from us to heaven. So they proposed two men. Joseph, who was called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know the thoughts of everyone. So show us which of these two you have chosen to serve as an apostle in the place of Judas, who left to go to the place where he belongs. Then they drew lots to choose between the two men, and the one chosen was Matthias, who was added to the group of eleven apostles. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 68, 1 through 10. God rises up and scatters his enemies. Those who hate him run away in defeat. As smoke is blown away, so he drives them off. As wax melts in front of the fire, so do the wicked perish in God's presence. But the righteous are glad and rejoice in his presence. They are happy and shout for joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Prepare, prepare a way for him who rides in the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be glad in his presence. God who lives in his sacred temple cares for orphans and protects his widows. He gives the lonely a home to live in and leads prisoners out into happy freedom. But rebels will have to live in a desolate land. O oh God, when you lead your people, when you march across the desert, 
The earth shook and the sky poured down rain. Because of the coming of the God of Sinai, the coming of the God of Israel, you caused abundant rain to fall and restored your worn out land. Your people made their home there. In your goodness, you provided for the poor. The second lesson is from 1 Peter 4, 12 through 19, and 5, 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is in the spirit of God, is resting on you. If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble, or prying into other people's affairs. But it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called by His name. For the time has come for judgment, and it must begin with God's household. And if judgment begins with us, what terrible fate awaits those who have never obeyed God's good news. And also, if the righteous are barely saved, what will happen to godly sinners? So if you are suffering in a manner that pleases God, keep on doing what is right, and trust your lives to God who created you, for he will never fail you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert, like a roaring lion. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I have in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. From the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and known truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name, that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This morning, I am so honored and privileged to once again ask Kent Fermer to come forward and give us a wonderful message for this Memorial Day 2020.
came by today to see you Oh, I had to let you held you and never let go Oh, it's kept me awake nights wondering I lie in the dark just asking why I've always been told you won't be called home until it's your Is heaven was needing a hero Somebody just like you Brave enough to stand up For what you believe And follow it through When I try to make it make sense in my mind The only conclusion I come to Is that heaven was needing a hero Like you
Memorial Day is a national holiday set aside to honor military service members who died in a war. Memorial Day is sometimes confused with Veterans Day. On Veterans Day, 11 November, we thank and honor those who served in the military. Memorial Day was initially called Decoration Day because graves were decorated with flowers and flags. And in May of 1874, a lady in Knoxville, Tennessee, who was chair, uh, chairperson of the organization that put flowers on the graves, happened to see a window in town full of flags and an idea came to her. She decorated the cemetery with graves of flags. The name was changed to Memorial Day to put emphasis on the fallen and not on the graves. Memorial Day is a sacred day to war veterans. None of us need to be reminded why Memorial Day must be remembered and observed. Judging from what Memorial Day has become, to some of us, it's another day off from work. Perhaps a reminder of its true significance is due. Far too often, the nation as a whole takes for granted the freedom that all Americans enjoy. Those freedoms were paid for with the lives of others, which few of us actually knew. This is a national debt that can only be repaid by individual Americans honoring the nation's deceased veterans. We preserve their memory and thus their honor through their service and sacrifice. Our nation mourns the loss of all Americans who died defending the country throughout the world since 1775. These are men and women who are mostly anon anonymous except for the families who loved them. These men and women came from all regions of the country and all works, walks of life. But they had things in common. The love of and loyalty to America. These people may have been friends, relatives, or neighbors, all melded together to become defenders of our country. Memorial Day is exclusively for honoring those who died in uniform during wartime. America commemorates those who made the greatest sacrifices possible, the giving of one's life selflessly. Our means of paying tribute vary. Pausing for a few moments in, in silence is an option for everyone. Whether you attend commemorative ceremonies, place flags on grave sites, march in parades, sponsor a patriotic program, or the simple act of wearing a buddy poppy. However, you choose to remember, it is the thought that counts. Perhaps the most profound tribute of all was made on the first National Memorial Observance in May of 1868 by then General James A. Garfield, what he said, and I quote, they summed up and perfected by one supreme act, the highest virtues of men and citizens for love of country, they accepted death. And this resolves all doubts and made immortal their patriotism and virtue. 
This is why Memorial Day is so important. We do not just honor those who participated in the most hellacious firefights. We honor the more than one million men and women who lost their lives America, defending America in wars. From the revolution of this country to the global war of terrorism, and now into the fighting in Afghanistan. People like Marine Sergeant William Stacy, who was on his fourth deployment to Afghanistan when he was killed by an IED blast while walking patrol in Helmand Province in, in January of 2012. Like many of us who go to war, Sergeant Stacy left behind a letter to be read just in case something happened to him. And he wrote, my death did not change the world, and it may be tough for you to justify its meaning at all. But there is a greater meaning to it. Perhaps I did not change the world, but there will be a child who will live because men left the security they enjoyed in their own country to come to his country. He will walk his streets not worried about whether or not his leader's henchmen are going to come and kidnap him. He will grow into a fine man who will pursue every opportunity his heart could desire. He will have the gift of freedom. He will give the gift of freedom that I have enjoyed for so long. If my life buys the safety of one child who will one day change this world, then I know that it was all worth it. Like all who fell fighting in the prime of their lives, Sergeant Stacy is forever young. To be remembered this Memorial Day and many to come for bestowing on all of us the gift of freedom. And I thank you all for attending and keep in your hearts and remember to please pray for our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guard folks. And thank you very much. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Christ our Lord. You sent your son Jesus to restore us to you with the victory of the resurrection. With the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join your in him. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of power and might, the heavens and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the same night when Jesus was arrested, while he was eating supper with his friends, he took some bread, gave thanks for it, passed it around saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this with the remembrance. Again, after that, he took the cup, gave thanks for it, began passing it around, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witnesses of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So now we pray your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join the prayers of those of your service of every time and every place. Unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes in his victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespassers, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. At this time, I invite you all to get a piece of bread and share the body of Christ with me. Bet the body of Christ given for you. Bet the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ is On this Memorial Day, let us be thankful for the sacrifices so many throughout the history have made, for the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for their families, who have to carry on without them. In this sacrifice, that is easy to forget. For those who have it, freedom is like oxygen. It's something we must have. Many will not understand just how precious either is until they are at risk of being taken away. There are encroachments being made on our freedom rights now by those who think that they know better. This is a conversation for another time. Today, I remember the sacrifices made and the debt I cannot repay. Today, I pray to God in heaven to bless the families of those who have lost loved ones while serving our great nation. I pray for him to bless and to comfort the walking wounded who are still with us and bless their families as well. It is also my prayer that we remember their sacrifice is the precious gift of freedom every day. Not just once a year, but when they are, we are in danger or being, or of that being taken away. Lord bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 